Good afternoon from Gothenburg, Sweden. It's the central station there behind me. We just arrived by a train from Copenhagen, Denmark on a three hour journey, which I've filmed and will have been in a previous video. But now literally it's our very first impressions of Gothenburg. Some public toilets here with card payments, very, uh, very modern. I'll uh, point the camera away. Five Swedish kron um, for that. 50p. 50 pence, so it's about, about standard for the Europe, I'd say. Well, it's good that they take um, cars because all of the places in Denmark needed cash, didn't it? Yeah. We didn't have any cash. Yeah, uh, we don't have any cash. Probably it's a fully cashless trip. Most of uh, Europe is, to be fair, these days. Just contactless for everything. I know Spain is, we go quite a lot, and, and uh, all of um, well, Copenhagen was, and, and obviously, clearly, Gothenburg is too. Look at this train, metropolis of trains. Look at this, though, wow. This is like Central Plaza, and we've got, I meant to say tram by the way, not train. We've got tram lines running here, a little sausage dog, and this really sort of um, like classic style hotel here, the hotel. Eggers or maybe it's edges or something like that. So I really like a renaissance sort of the colours of the, the green roof and the, the the cream and the burgundy with this like tram style. You know what I mean? It just looks so retro. The train station's beautiful, isn't it? Just like a really old-fashioned building, central station. Not like one of these ones that's just like a giant glass facade and like a million different lines and all the rest of it. You know, they get a bit sick of them. Need a bit more of, of this style. So first impressions, this looks absolutely amazing. So heritage, so vintage. Just uh, just really, really awesome. I just noticed there as well, on the top of this bus, there's like a full on like, um, uh, how, it's like an ecology sort of um, uh, like infrastructure here. There's like, like almost like huge nesting facilities for, for birds. Um, it looks like the exact same on the other bus stop. So it looks like uh, definitely Green Initiative is a huge, uh, huge thing here in Gothenburg. I noticed there was a, a, a zero emission train that was running, like a long, long distance train, um, which has been serviced by uh, Flix, the Flix bus famously, but Flix train. So what have I got here? I literally arrived here five minutes ago. Heritage buildings, an old vintage, like 50 style uh, town. Um, but with like modern 21st century green energy. Just saying, look on top of the bus st uh, bus stops. It's like sort of yeah, yeah, for the birds to great like to I don't know nest up, but grazing and then obviously it offsets emissions and stuff like that. Look at this. I was just saying how nice and heritage everything feels like so vintage. Like I was like that. that yeah, yeah. I see how nice it is that it's not just like a big glass facade like every other train station yeah. and then that hotel with its colours of the green and the cream and the sort of crimson uh... It's so classic Yeah, yeah, and then the tram lines, I was like, it's like a, a picturesque like Audrey Hepburn film or something yeah. like that Really, really nice I love these, uh, I saw a bit of these in Copenhagen as well to be fair but uh, the sort of Scandinavian barn style wooden with the triangular roof buildings, very nice. No dogs allowed. Well, just like every trip that we do, as uh, budget travellers, we are on a on a budget. Um, and today we're going to be seeing what we can get in Gothenburg for £50. So we'll be going through and racking everything up, what it costs, accommodation, food, getting around the place, seeing, seeing what there is to see um, and seeing if we can get that under £50 so you can get a good idea of what, uh, what a, I'd say £50 is quite a budget, um, especially, especially in, in Scandinavia. Europe. Well, yeah, I mean, in, especially in Europe, but then even more, especially in, in Scandinavia. Um, so we're going to try and make this work, but at the moment we're enjoying the free city park. Well, the 
there is a Newcastle United match on later <laughs> on today and so it's a great pleasure to be in the country of the great Alexander Isak hopefully that'll uh, bear us some good luck so we need to find a pub later on as well have some drinks watch the match um, but it is a, a televised game so we should be able to find somewhere uh, we noticed there was like an Irish bar that had loads of screens on just by the train station there and but actually we looked on the internet at a different sports bar didn't we yeah and the picture that somebody put on the Google reviews was of a Newcastle match it was of Newcastle versus Chelsea so you know hopefully we'll we'll find somewhere because uh, no matter where we've been in the world throughout this is country number 25 for us just landed now 25 so in all 25 countries we've never missed the Newcastle match whether that's been waking up at 2 30 a.m 4 a.m in Japan or you know whether it's been um, going to an Irish bar in uh, in, in Bukit Bintang in Kuala Lumpur Malaysia we've always found somewhere to play the games it's always the worst though when you go down and you say oh please you put, put the match on later on and you have to even take your shirt with you so you can like point at the badge and you go in and they've got like a Juventus game on with a black <laughs> like, oh, it's black and white though <laughs> but look at this oh wow okay, maybe like a university or something I think the river's slightly more opaque. You can definitely see the edges yeah. over there. The bottom might just be mud, where I feel like the bottom of the river's in um, Copenhagen might have been stone. Mm -hmm. So that might cause it. Maybe so. Look at this beautiful building with these like small versions of shops. There's like a 7 Eleven, a body shop, um, a, a beautiful florist. Let's go and have a look over there. So nice. So we don't get killed by a tram because there are plenty of them. Look at this. It's like an idyllic Scandi village, but in a major city. Yeah. Is that like breakfast for two? For 39? Potentially, yeah. I mean, that's like a really good deal, that. A sandwich, an innocent smoothie, a coffee, and two yogurt and granolas for. Um, £3, three pound and or £4 ish. Yeah, well, but yeah. Oh, look, can you see that? Like, oh, wow. It's like a masts of a tall ship. Three huge masts just down the very bottom. I don't think you'll be able to see it on this wide angle. Oh, look at this. A contemporary building. Avalon, it's called. Maybe it's a hotel. Swedish match. Some sort of cafe, maybe. Now, the restaurant that I found, it, I always go onto Google Maps and I check one pound price. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it gets a scale of like one pound, two pound, three pounds, or four. And this one had some really good reviews. Um, and they sell Swedish meatballs, and we're in Sweden, and we'll have to, you know. The, the itinerary for every new country, as we always say, you've got to eat the food, the local food, you've got to sleep there, and you've got to see what there is to see. So we're going to explore around this beautiful town, eat Swedish meatballs, and then we're going to check into our hostel, which we'll show you later on as well, show you what, um, what you know, how much a hostel is here, and what you get for that price. It's all to come in this absolutely amazing city. I'm truly, truly loving it here. Just look at this, this is like, just pure European living. Sat out on the terraces with the orange glow of the heat lamps as people are enjoying a cold beer, despite the cold weather. It's not even that cold. 
Well, yeah, I do. I say that, but it's warmer than it was in Copenhagen. But I think there's just less wind here, given that you know they're not being battered by the Baltic and the North Sea at once, which Copenhagen is. Well, look at this, it's like a market. Oh, it's like a market in here. Let's have a look. Granger market. Oh, there's nothing nicer than Granger Market. <laughs> oh, look at this wine bar. Wow. Sorry, I take that back immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Veg. As soon as you walk in here, you get the smell of fish, fried foods. Just really, really nice. Just look at this. The level of food. It's not an ordinary market. This is definitely a gastro market selling delicacies, fine foods, also like miniature restaurants. Wow, look at this. Look at this bakery. What? He said that man touched that baguette. I hope he has every intention of buying it. Oh, well he has to feel it, the know it's the right baguette for him. Look at all these nuts. Hello, friendly people here. Spanish, all kinds of different, I guess, olives and things like that from various different places in Europe. Italian, French, Spanish. You got grapes, not grapes, sorry, yeah, what are they called? Uh, dates. Are they dates? I think they're Hello. <laughs> ah, such friendly people here. The same in Copenhagen as well. Scandinavian people are so friendly. Very, very busy though. Wow, the food, I'm just looking at some of these plates here. The food just looks absolutely amazing. Like, proper high restaurant quality food being served out of these market stalls here. Absolutely amazing. Is that Vietnamese style banh mi? Four or five pounds for this. Sorry, no, that's four pounds. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. Give it a go. You try. It? Mm. It's like almondy custardy. Sweet. Mm. Sweet. Let's have a look. Look at that. Mine's got a bit of like ice and sugar on it. Some like sauteed almonds by the looks of it. But it's like a bready consistency. Let's give that a go. Mm. Oh wow. I like that a lot more than I like the um, cinnamon swirl that we had yesterday in Copenhagen. That's beautiful, way more sweet. Definitely, just as Pace says, it's got like this like lovely sort of vanilla custard kick to it. Creamy taste. Absolutely lovely. Go. You can get a, all sorts of meals here for um, about here? seven or eight pounds. Are they selling meatballs? Yeah. Right, it's fine. Oh, we can get meatballs up here, look. Meatballs, amazing. Yeah, we'll do that. Let's sit in the market with the locals and we'll eat Swedish meatballs. We've ordered Swedish meatballs and some Swedish fish. So kind of get more Swedish than that, can we? Let's have a look at this here. It's just arrived. Look at their meatballs. It comes with some sort of like tart jam. I'm guessing lingonberry, lingonberry jam, mashed potato, vegetables. And then here we've got the, um, I guess it's Place. like place fish, but it's in like a breadcrumb with uh, maybe it's a tartar sauce I imagine and the same same sides here. Let's, uh, let's have a little look at this actually. Look at this here. It's got the, the Swedish gravy on it. 
famous from IKEA. <laughs> Very different as well than what to what I've had before. I don't know how to describe it. It's slightly more um, dry. But I don't mean that in a negative way. It's not like the sort of like uh, like normally they're a little bit like sloppy or like something like moist. that. Yeah, like maybe it's overly moist. Whereas these are like steamed, isn't it? I feel like when they keep them hot, they're kept in like a steam container. Yes. Whereas these are like have been cooked and then left. They like have a sturdier structure to them. I guess is the best way of putting it. Mm. And you want to try the fish? Yeah, let's try the fish. This is police fish. Mm. 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 The fish is absolutely amazing. I know you've put lemon on that already, but the lemon kick and that fish is absolutely amazing. I can't explain it. I'm not gonna like overly describe fish to you, but it's just really, really nice. Oh, what a place we're in here. The local market, everyone's enjoying some wine, various different delicacies. Multi layered, two floors, and this lovely market cafe in the center of Gothenburg. This is what it's all about. In Sweden, Swedish meatballs, Swedish fish, in this local Swedish market. Can't get better than this. Okay, let's try some of this uh, lingonberry. Let's try this. Oh, that's sweet and sour and tart all at the same time. That's lovely. Are you gonna try the mash? No, I'm not gonna try the mash. <laughs> I don't like mushy food, I'm sorry. But, yeah, all of this here, yeah, there's two meals. And we got some water. Look, comes with like a, a big uh, jar of, of water, which was already on the desk, which is like amazing. Last time we ever had that was in Japan. Every time you go in a restaurant in Japan, there's always water put on the on the table for you. Well, this costs 17 pounds for these two meals here. So you know, it's like eight pound fifty per meal, which you know for Scandinavia, I think it's a good price. It's a good uh, budget find, I would say. And uh, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it, and I'm going to continue enjoying it till I'm. Pull up for lunch. It also comes with complimentary rye bread, and then like you know the, you know the types with butter, just on like the communal basket here. So now this might dip it in some of the gravy as well, you know. Mmm. Tell you what, it's very nice and. When you spend, you know, your eight pound fifty here on, uh, on lunch, because we're going fifty pounds for one person here, not not for both. You spend <laughs> your eight pound fifty here. You know, you can fill up with some rye bread as well. A couple of these. And you've had your meatballs and your gravy and your mashed potato and your veg. You know, you're going to leave here feeling more than satiated on a nice lunch time here. That's absolutely lovely. That is. Mm. Dip it in the gravy a bit. Oh, I've got it in the gravy now. Mmm. Look around in this restaurant here. Various different pieces of artwork of, of Gothenburg. I feel like I keep saying Copenhagen, but it's just because we're so used to being there, but now. Got on a train three hours later, I got up and I'm in a new country, new customs, new food, everything. So, what I've actually realised I've eaten that is, because we're doing one person on this budget, my meal is actually only 99, which is only 70, £7.70, so it's even cheaper. Thank you. Wow. That was a lovely experience eating Swedish meatballs. So if you're expecting Swedish meatballs to be like the ones you get in Ikea, well, if that market store has anything to go by, expect a smaller portion of bigger, more um, slightly drier or structurally more solid meatballs. But great flavor still remains, which is great. So many uh, of these uh, butchers. 
Hopefully you can try some Torito. Is there a piece for me there? Oh, okay. let's give this a try. Mm. That's not chorito. It's more like like a spiced. Uh, mm. I'm not sure, like a salami. Yeah, it's a salami, definitely not not chorito. But um, it's the same like color as chorito. Yeah, it like it's chorizo, definitely not. It's not a chorito. Mm. These nice boards and stuff you can get. Mm. There's so many similarities in Scandinavia to your old world European nations like France, Spain, Italy, you know? You might not think of it's like the Nordic, you know, the Scandinavian Nordic culture, harder culture, worse, you know, terrible like freezing weather, all the rest of it, but you know, they're liking the cured meats, nice wines, there's so many wine bars I've seen so far tapas small plates, big lunches in, you know, big uh, big lunches, people are eating like large size lunches. So we'll see later if they do the same in the evening, because obviously in Spain, you know, have a huge lunch, and a very small uh, evening meal. So it's be very interesting to see if that's the same. But that's so interesting to me to find that they're actually, um, the cultures are so similar, despite being in completely different, um, you, you know, countries of, of weather, of, of, of types of people, of um, you know music and art and all that sort of thing so I find that extremely interesting and coming to a place like a market is always like you know it's the soul of the city because it's like the first trade the the original heritage trade you always find in the market it's always you know before long before there were shops you know you had market stalls and vendors so how these develop into the modern type like you've got here I mean just look at that nothing like a market of an olden days it's a real stamp on how the gastro culture has developed in a country and you look at a place like this and you can see it's developed extremely well with a very particular taste on fine wines, meats and bakery, baked goods and obviously delicious meatballs. Over there they had a restaurant that was like a Greek inspired sweet. Food. Really like a, like like a, a mix, yeah. like a hybrid Greek sweet, Swedish. Lots oh. of soups. Lots of soup. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you see, so there maybe but it's a the bit of a cold weather influence is still here with the soup. The meatballs were more expensive on that one, so we got a bargain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The meatballs were a great price here. Um, obviously, there was only three. Of course, I would have liked more, you know, but I'm an expensive country. I'm not going to um, be too shocked at prices. Like, uh, obviously, I'm not uh, not being ignorant of the fact that £7 for three meatballs with a bit of mashed potatoes is a lot of money. Of course it is. But from what we saw when we googled for the cheapest restaurants in Gothenburg, etc., they were charging 10, 11 pounds for a portion of meatballs, or seven pounds here. That'll go a long way, you know, I can have a nice cup of coffee now, because coffee's about four pounds a cup in this part of the world. But yeah, shall we go outside and have a look more in the city? That'll be, let's have a look at this. Uh, look at these cobblestone streets. Nice green open park, the river, and look at these beautiful buildings here. This really is just classic heritage Europe right here. So I'd say, you know, if you, you know, not desperate to go to like a, you know, cheaper country, a cheaper location, and you want in that like classic European feel of cobblestone streets and these quaint ornate buildings with the real wine drinking tapas type culture but you small want to try something culture. yeah small place culture <laughs> you want to try something new then you know going to, to Spain or going to, to Greece Italy etc and I reckon Gothenburg mm. would be a great place I to come it. So far, it's, been lovely. it's beautiful and there's that espresso house which we've seen throughout Scandinavia so that's interesting in Copenhagen you're 450 for a coffee at that exact chain coffee shop in Gothenburg, only three pound twenty, so that's pretty amazing. That's that's good. That's a good sign. Maybe maybe Sweden's going to be the cheapest country on our three-legged journey of Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Let's go this way. No plan. <laughs> Thank you,
Just came across this stunning, I don't know, town hall. Um, I think it's a church. A maybe a church. Like, it doesn't look like a church because I'm looking inside a sneak peek and it might be a church. Yeah, it doesn't have like any sort of remnants of Christianity or anything on the sides of it. It's certainly not, um, nothing obvious, no mosaics, no carvings or anything into the stone there. But let's have a look inside. What an amazing city this is, Gothenburg. Say no phones. I mean, it looks like there might already be some sort of ceremony, but just get a brief idea of this stunning building. So it is inside. It does have um, homages to Christianity. Various symbols depicting the cross, depicting uh, obviously we've got the holy altar there with the, the angels, but uh, in a very unique way that I've not really seen before. This like ultra clean white aesthetic, LED backlit across. It's gone for like a super modern. Um, so I imagine this building has either been built fairly recently or has been renovated inside to almost house this sort of modern outfit um, of a Christian church but it's like beautiful marble pillars here with the veins of marble running right through them and you've got that great golden display up there it's a really interesting church certainly different you know you've got like the sort of grey pews here oh well, they've actually got cushions on them See, when I was a lad going to church, we didn't get uh, the privilege of nice padded cushions like that. <laughs> but yeah, what a lovely and interesting church this is. This is built in 1962. Built in 1962, my guess was, was right then. It is a modern building. 1962, this has only been open for since. Um, a very modern approach to a Christian church. To a, to a, is, it, is it definitely a cathedral? Yes, a cathedral. So this is, a, well, I'm guessing the main cathedral of Gothenburg at this point then. So, that's really interesting. Never been in a church like this before. It's what I imagine some of the churches in America that look like, given America is such a young country. Um, but yeah, this is a very interesting to see. Really, really, especially in contrast to how I've described some of the other buildings around Gothenburg have been like super heritage, very traditional. And uh, then the main cathedral, which is normally the oldest building in a city, or one of the oldest buildings in a city, is super modern, clean aesthetic, minimalist, with gold detailing everywhere. It said it was originally built in the 17th, founded in the 1600s, but in 1802 it was destroyed completely. Um, and they rebuilt the building in 1815, and then it, the last renovation was in 1962. Wow, so I wonder what caused it to uh, oh, be destroyed. So it's even more modern than 1961 then. So even more modern than 1961, 2013 it was recently renovated. So just as I thought, I mean, the other building is, has the much grandiose as this. You don't assume, you know, that it wasn't sort of from the 1700s or whatever. They don't just put up buildings like this in the 60s, obviously, but... Um, obviously, I, I, I was definitely right in thinking about that. That was definitely a modern look on Christian church. I don't know what it looked like before, but certainly very interesting. Very different to... Well, is it different, though? Because I think Gothenburg, from what I've seen so far, is a city of, of like, really old heritage facades, but inside ultra-modern and contemporary interiors, you look at the market we went to, you know, a classic old market square, but inside was was 
super nice wine bars and, and charcuterie restaurants and things like this which were all like lined with beautiful aesthetic lighting it's not like one of them big open uh, markets that you'd get in Spain or something like that which is just sort of you know very primitive stalls selling stuff and, and whatnot like this was like being like you know an ancient, a really old building but purpose with a modern modern interior so maybe that's a bit of a you know a, a microcosm of that having the, the main cathedral is like this this sort of huge ornate building and then inside is this like modern minimalist type type church so so that's the building that we were just in and then just here we have this sort of sea creature like a half half man half a uh, well various different sea creatures, he's got a fish for a leg, he's got a starfish <laughs> for a hand, he's got all sorts of, of octopus tentacles and coral shells and shells all over his face. Yeah, way more, uh, way more psychedelic than the little mermaid one in Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> coming down just giving a warm glow on them sandstone buildings this is just absolutely amazing why is it so prominent in places to put your opera house on the water that's interesting yeah if anybody knows let us know the sydney opera house in newcastle has the sage opera house in copenhagen we saw the uh the copenhagen opera house and now here we are at the goth Gothenburg Opera or the Gothenburg Opera House, all of them here on the water. So I wonder why why that is. Oh, they're building a huge building over there. It's so interesting around here. It's like extremely different to where we were just down the road here. Yeah, it's a totally different aesthetic, though, isn't it? Yes. Look at that, like building up there, that's like something out of like a sci-fi film. We are in the bike lane here. Someone set off a, uh, a baby boy. having a baby boy <laughs> to see this video. And there's your gender reveal <laughs> through like metal <laughs> grates and from like a hundred feet away on a wide angle lens. I'm sure that'll be lovely. <laughs> Rent a kayak, 50 meters. Look at this. Yeah. Gothenburg Marina. We've got the Opera House. All the boats here. Some, some strange buildings. I guess they're all banks and offices and things like that. Cool is this, eh? Look at that boat over there. Well, this is truly the other side of Gothenburg. There's a biplane flies over there. It's so different, this industrial area port of Gothenburg that this area is called. It's entirely different from that beautiful vintage 50s style towns where you feel like you're in an Aubrey Hepburn, Audrey Hepburn movie. And here you're, you're on the, the sort of on the, on the edge of the water with huge industry, ginormous, I don't know, 80 storey building getting built over there. Just uh, truly two sides of the city. Just look at that really strange red and white building up there it's, and at the very top there's all sorts of different little pods and strange shaped windows and rooms it's 
really like something out of a out of a sci-fi film very 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 strange but uh yeah i think we'll uh I'm gonna relax here on the waterfront and then head back to the town and see what there is to do then. I'm gonna find a pub and watch the Newcastle United match against Bournemouth today. So we've came to Robert's Coffee here in Gothenburg and uh, I've got a chai latte which has cost me three pounds. So my total is now up to 10 pounds for my lovely Swedish meatballs and now an Indian chai latte. Here it is, just arrived here. Look at that. Very nice. What a lovely cafe this is, just playing some nice uh, saxophone jazz music. Sitting here, relaxing. Look at this. As the bustling streets of Gothenburg go by, I'm sitting here, listening to some jazz, and enjoying a nice hot drink. What more could you ask for? Absolutely lovely. You got a nice free, uh, free little chocolate with that as well, isn't that nice? Cheers. Cheers. Uh, I've never had that. a chai latte before. No, I've only ever just had just chai, you know, but it's nicer because you get that lovely sweet foam, the milk on top. It's very, very sweet. That's more sweet than I'm used to with chai, but uh, I do believe that the chai in India, which will be experiencing in just a matter of a couple of months is actually super super sweet as well more sweet than i make it at home so gotta get used to that that's absolutely lovely what a fine little place just got myself four pastries for two pound i've got myself two pan of chocolates a maple and pecan twist or plat and a pastilla nata, the Portuguese tart, which is absolutely uh, an absolute bargain. All four of these boiling hot, fresh out of the, the oven for just two pounds. Like, how about that? And don't worry if you don't speak Swedish here, because just look at this. Filled chocolate donut. If you just read it, as it says, it sounds exactly the same as English. As a little tip, come down to the local little. Well, it was a big little, actually. Four pastries for two pounds, I'm sorted right out here. Look at this, just uh, a few hundred feet away from that stadium, we've got one pitch, two pitch, three, another three in the background there, all with seven and eleven aside goals, fully with nets, and look, you can just walk on and use them. Just access to, you know, 5G football pitches, eleven aside goals, now anyone who likes football and from England knows how just much of a privilege that is. Like we have to pay like 75 quid an hour to or risk your life or climb over climb like the one fence. of these like 15 foot fences like just to try and play a bit of footy. The fact that you can just like rock up here and just start pinging balls at an 11 side goal it's just like you know that's absolutely amazing and it's the type of thing you get in these, these sorts of country, countries, especially in Scandinavia is uh, obviously they pay like an insane amount of tax um, here and but obviously in return you get nice things, you know, like open footy pitches for everyone and they're not overcrowded either so there's obviously plenty of them or people just aren't as interested as how many facilities there are but yeah, what I would do for that man just to have in your city centre, look at it, surrounded by all the buildings, all the, all the shops, everything. You've just got this like green area, Glen Heritage buildings, and then these beautiful 5G football pitches. You can do seven a side, you can do 11 a side. It's just, it's just absolutely amazing. And it, it might sound ridiculous, but anyone who, who likes football will, in the U, specifically in the UK, will understand why that's so amazing. Big glass of red wine here. Got the football on over there and over there. Well, my wine's not on here, but it was only um, five pounds fifty, which is great. That's the uh, five fifty is uh, the price that I would expect to pay at home, but 
that was one of the weirdest experiences of my uh, bar drinking life. Was, so this might be normal to any Swedish people watching this, but uh, I ordered the drinks and it came to 143 Swedish coins, which is like 11 pounds or something like that. And then I asked to pay on card, so he gave me the card machine and then it said 143 on it. I tried to tap it. I tapped me contactless, but nothing happened when I tapped me contactless. So I said, oh, is it, is it not contactless? And he's like, oh, you have to put it in. So I was like, oh, I put my card in. He's like, no, 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 you have to type it in. Like, I was, I was very confused at this point. I was like, and then he's like, oh, I type in how much you want to pay. It's like, well, I was, very, I was awfully confused. I was like, well, well, well how much is it? Like, and he's like, oh, 143, and it did say 143 on there. I was like, this is so confusing, so I have to type in 143, but it already says 143. And then he's like, um, well, yeah, you have to just decide how much you want to pay, but it can't be less than 143. So it's like, so it's 143, and I have to type in how much I want to pay, and it can't be less than 143. So I'm guessing in hindsight that's like how they do their tip scenario, their tipping situation is like if it's 143, you can choose to pay like 155, and that would be like a one pound tip or whatever. But it was awfully confusing, someone that's never seen that before. It's like, yeah, just just you type in how much you want to pay. Like, imagine going to a bar and just like, just, oh, it's just whatever you want to pay, mate. So like, I'll sort you out. But anyway, that was a, just a bit of a cultural difference, which was, uh, I thought was worth noting in case anyone comes to a bar in Sweden and gets asked to type in how much they want to pay. I think it's so you, you tip, yeah, you get the amount and then you add the tip of what you want and then you type that in and pay that. So yeah, I'm going to enjoy this uh, nice glass of wine here. So just some ideas of the prices here, what you can expect in a bar in central Gothenburg. For your average lager here, you've got some original like Swedish lagers like Sofirio and Zunerts, things like this are well, 56 for, um, it's almost a pint, it's 400 ml, so 150 ml less than a pint, and that's £4.30. Or if you're into like your IPAs, there's some Swedish IPAs here, 68 for that one which is £5.30, which is not bad for a pint of IPA in the centre of the city. Um, what else have we got? If you like your Guinness, you're going to be paying 76 for a Guinness, which is £5.90, £6, a, six pounds a, for a, a small pint of that. But yeah, so you can you can look to be paying like four to six pounds for a pint of, of whatever your favourite thing is, which, which isn't too bad. But going to enjoy the match, hopefully the tune win today, and uh, we'll see you after. By night, it's no less beautiful. These lovely sort of sandstone buildings are lit up with fairy lights on the trees. Unfortunately, there's a 1 1 draw there of Newcastle and Bournemouth. The, uh, the fate of being in Sweden while Alexander Isak was playing. Uh, didn't turn out to be so I'm gonna try not to get hit by this tram here and we're gonna head for some food now well we're gonna head towards our hostel and stop for some food we found out about this Indian tally place which does uh, obviously some great like, Indian food and tally trays for a really good price so we're definitely it was both. another one of my special Take the one pound signs. Select the restaurants by the cheapest first. <laughs> and uh, we both absolutely love Indian food. And so that sounds great. We're gonna go there and then we'll head to the hostel. So we'll see how that goes. Although it is late and it says we have to make our own bed. So we're praying for bottom yeah. bugs this time. The hostel's like <laughs> a bit of like an eco hostel and you have to make your own bed. But we have to make our own bed at the last hostel. So maybe it's like a... A Scandi, Scandi hostel thing. thing. Yeah, <laughs> like they put our own sheets on and stuff. It only takes two minutes, but when you're on the top bunk, it was um, very noisy. It was very difficult <laughs> for me to do. But uh, yeah, let's go and get some nice tally. That was a great uh, pub, really nice. Uh, I'd say it was pretty authentic. Had great music on, had the Premier League football on. Um, and the prices were really good. The prices were great, like four or five pounds a pint, five pounds for a glass of wine. So that's absolutely lovely. I think I'm up to. Uh, uh, 17 pounds on my uh, uh, spent so far with my seven pound lunch my three pound coffee my two pounds of pastries and then my five pound glass of wine there and then we're going to go and have a nice uh, dinner this evening 
and then check into our hostel and we'll see if I managed to stay under 50 pounds spent for a day backpacking in Gothenburg, Sweden. So here we have it, this unbelievable looking tally tray. Probably the best tally tray I've, I've ever had, ever seen. I've had quite a few in Malaysia and even in Newcastle as well. So look at this. We've got tandoori chicken. We've got rice. This is kind of like a poppadom uh, with various, it looks like it's got like herbs or seeds in it. We have lamb kadai. We have prawn kadai. And then we'll have a yogurt with cucumber, etc. Comes with a dessert of gulab jamun, <laughs> as Dale Phillip would call it, gulab jamun, which is like a milk dessert, like a milk. Um, I don't know how to describe it, a squidgy milk dessert. <laughs> Got a butter naan here to, to eat all this with. And then top it off with some masala chai, proper authentic masala chai. Different to what I had in the coffee shop earlier. This is the real deal right here. But just look at this. This is absolutely delightful. Surrounded by this lovely Indian aesthetic. Ornaments of Ganesha over there. The only people in this restaurant, but that does not mean anything because people are just missing out because this food looks absolutely amazing. Let's try some of this lamb here. Oh, let's have a go at that. Mm. That's so nice. So it was spicy. It's not. It's not really spicy at all, but it has a beautiful deep tomato based curry it's fragrant with the coriander fresh that's absolutely beautiful we've got some tandoori chicken here let's dip that in there oh, is there anything better than this guys there's not <laughs> that is absolutely divine well all of this came to what was it um 17? 17. 17 pounds. For your meal. My meal, chai. masala chai, naan, everything else. So that puts me at, I think, 34 pounds in total now. 34 in total. We haven't got the hostel just yet. So we'll see how much the hostel costs. I might go a little bit over, but we'll see. I'm going to enjoy this tally tray and uh, we'll check out the hostel a little bit later on. Well, that's New Delhi Indian restaurant in Gothenburg here. That was absolutely delicious. Really friendly uh, waiter there. Just a lovely little place. Let's go and check into the hostel. We'll see what that looks like, what a hostel looks like here in Sweden and how much it costs. And we'll go and enjoy that now. Well, we've got our linen. <laughs> That's the hostel there. But our dorm is actually across the way, that over man. here, in these glass doors. That man was so friendly. It was the most gentle soul. It was like, I don't know, 35, 40 year old guy. He's so calm and just so gentle, unbelievably polite. Kept apologising when he made the slightest mistake in his English. This is just so unnecessarily, um, you know, just what a lovely, lovely guy. But. Uh, the hostel was £20, so that brings my total for the day to £54, so £4 over budget, which I think I'll let myself off with. But here is our hostel here. I'll be careful what I film in case. It's a uh, oh. It's a while back now. So have you, so you're, you're leaving tomorrow or? Yeah. Okay. You have the whole day or are you leaving midday? Midday. So this is what a £20 dorm gets you in Sweden here. You get your own locker, nice bin, and a very, very primitive situation. This page in her bottom bunk. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to make your own bed. There's a TV up there, I didn't notice that. I'm not sure that's going to come in any use. And uh, yeah, we're... Uh, 
sharing the room with a French game designer, which is uh, which is which is very interesting. He has his own sleeping bag, so maybe that's the, the trick here. But uh, yeah, this is it. A very humble abode. This is what you gotta do when you're a budget traveller. It's a creepy bed. <laughs> it's like anti anti-social behaviour bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it for a day in Gothenburg, Sweden. This is it. We're gonna have a nice rest now. Gotta be up tomorrow for a bus journey north up to Oslo, Norway. It's been an absolutely brilliant day. I'll definitely come back to Gothenburg because it's been absolutely amazing. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, good night from us here in our humble abode. Good night. <laughs>